Hi everyone, uh, I'm Kathy Dang and I'm here to talk to you about avoiding apps. Uh, so as a disclaimer, I'm not like railing against all apps. I actually love apps. I love Google Maps, I love Snapchat, I love Instagram. Uh, but that's not what I'm talking about here. Um, I'm talking about volunteer civic apps. Um, and I think it's really easy for people to kind of equate civic tech and civic apps. Uh, when people talk about civic apps, um, they'll, they'll always talk about like the technology first. Um, and also there's like no shortage of hackathons and app competitions that kind of like elevate apps as something you should aspire to. Um, but I think that tech can mean a lot of things and apps are just a tiny, tiny sliver. Um, and one thing about apps is that they're really hard to make. Um, there's a reason why Instagram has like a giant team of paid engineers. Uh, so while apps are great, I don't think they're, they're the best fit for volunteer projects. Um, and also there's a kind of more subtle issue with focusing on apps, which is that apps are often not inclusive. It's really hard to get um, a volunteer project that's an app and also involve a lot of people who are not developers, because having apps just really privileges coding over other types of work. Um, so anyways, let's talk about some other types of cool projects that aren't apps. So if you're looking to volunteer here and you're like not really sure how, uh, here are a bunch of free breakout group ideas. Um, so one thing I love is bots. So bots uh, are much more lightweight than apps and require much less maintenance. Uh, one I really like is a Twitter bot called Census Americans. Uh, a lot of census data is like aggregate data. It'll be like, uh, the per capita income of this zip code is X. And it's hard to see the people behind it, so this bot kind of personalizes uh, and humanizes the people behind, behind the data. It says, hey, I carpool with another person. I served during the Vietnam and Korean era. It's just kind of cool to see. Um, another type of bot uh, you can make, it doesn't have to be a Twitter bot, is a Slack bot. Um, here's a bot we have in our Slack where if you address a group of people that are not all guys as guys, it'll say, hey, did you mean nerds or peeps? Um, and also, the code for this is on GitHub. We've been thinking a lot about ways to uh, automate kind of uh, having people introduce themselves or give a little orientation when people join our Slack channels. If that's something you want to work on, talk to me. Uh, another thing I love is tutorials. So we have a blog at Hack Night, and the first post on our blog was uh, a tutorial about web scraping. Um, and tutorials are really cool because you can learn a small thing but then share it with a bunch of people. Uh, and I also think super simple websites are really underrated relative to apps. Um, so this is something we worked on at Hack Night. We did most of the work for this in like one evening, and it's really fun because a lot of the work uh, wasn't coding. We got like 15 people together and everyone was like researching articles about the Illinois budget crisis and they show up here. Uh, and then another thing that you can do is documentation. So tech projects involve a lot more than code. Uh, communication is also really important, but it's often undervalued. Uh, and a lot of projects, it's hard for an outsider to figure out, like, what is this even, and, like, how can I help? So if you want to help do that, that's awesome, too. Uh, this is another example that I love. Uh, so this is Mystery Shopping City Hall. So you get a bunch of people, and they do things like try to get a permit or try to get water turned on. Uh, and then you, you kind of log your experience and talk about how difficult it was. And I think... Uh, this involves no code whatsoever, but I think it's a really cool tech project because it requires a pretty holistic view of what a digital process should be. Uh, and now go forth and hack.